In the name of God, the compassionate, the merciful, hello everyone, and welcome to the Neopisod of the Fact series in which we discuss international political matters every week. This is Fouad Mahdavi, and in this episode I have the honor of being the host of Dr. Michael Jones, editor of the Culture Wars magazine. We are here to discuss Israel's inhuman actions and the role of Gold State demonstration in removing such human rights violations. Thank you for joining us, Michael, Professor Michael Jones, and good to be with you. Thank you. Good to be here. Thank you very much. Let us have your rich words for the first stride about Israel's human rights violations, ranging from daily abuses to ethnic cleansing to genocidal thinking and action. Go ahead. Well, right now, uh, the Israel has a, a limited window of opportunity. They've have, they have more access to power in the United States than any time in the history of Israel uh, because they have access to the Trump administration. And Donald Trump seems determined to do everything within his power to help out the Likud uh, party and uh, the Israel lobby in the United States. So they've got that moment now between now and November. Uh, the the deep state has been trying to get rid of Donald Trump ever since he was elected. Uh, we have seen three major attempts. Uh, the first one was called Russiagate. The second was the impeachment. And now we have the COVID virus, which is now being used as an excuse uh, to get rid of Donald Trump. The, the strategy is to wreck the economy by keeping people locked up as long as possible and uh, therefore creating discontent among the population who will then vote him out of office and vote the Democrats back into office. If the Democrats come back in, uh, there is a possibility that they will restore the, the JCPOA, uh, which was put in by the Obama administration, uh, but, but we don't know. This is all in, in the future. So at this point, Israel is trying to maximize its advantage by uh, annexing the West Bank. That, that seems to be uh, what they have in mind. Uh, Jared Kushner has arranged the so-called deal of the century in order to bring this about. And uh, there is going to be no interference from the United States uh, in doing this. Pompeo has uh, agreed to it. Uh, so the question is, uh, will they do it? What's, what is holding Israel back from annexing the West Bank? And at this point, I, in order to answer that question, I think we have to go back to the beginning of this year, the end of last year, and the murder of uh, General uh, Soleimani. Now, at that point, uh, the United States and uh, Iran came to the brink of war. Uh, there was an exchange of um, um, uh, attacks. Uh, it reached the point where uh, the uh, Trump said that if uh, Iran attacks the United States, or if Iran attacks the United States, any of its troops, uh, they will take out 52 sites. He named 52 sites, one for each hostage. Uh, Israel seemed to have got its dream come true because Israel has been trying to get the United States to go to war with Iran for, for decades now, especially under Netanyahu. And then at the last minute, nothing happened. Uh, what, what happened the day before? I mean, I, I w went on press TV and I said uh, that Iran should respond, retaliate against Israel because that's the that's the, um, the 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 main actor behind the scenes in the United States that's pr pushing. That's the man behind the curtain in American foreign policy. Uh, the next day, um, uh, Hassan Nasrallah announced that any attack on Iran would be seen by him as being promoted by Israel and it would cause him to attack Israel. He claimed that he had 250,000 missiles, uh, that they were ready to rain them down on Israel. And at that moment, everything stopped because uh, Netanyahu called up Donald Trump and told him to stand back. And then at that point, Iran l launched its attack uh, uh, basically against a, a military base in Iraq and uh, succeed. It's unclear how many people were uh, injured, uh, whether anybody died, but it turns out that the attack was much worse than everybody thought. And what it showed was uh, because the Iranians announced the target in advance, it showed that the Iranians or the Americans could not uh, stop the attack. Their Iron Dome missile system is defenseless. We've already known that because of the way it's been deployed in Saudi Arabia. 
So that, that's the status quo as of the beginning of the year. And I think the same thing applies now. They are still, uh, Israel is still under that threat. And the only question right now is, is the annexation of the West Bank going to trigger some type of reaction on the part of, let's say, Hezbollah? As you mentioned, uh, uh, the American believe that they can carry out any sort of fraud and conspiracy in the region with the help of Israelis and Zionist regime. And the out outline of the deal of century is one of those strategic mistakes. Do you believe that uh, this is a big mistake for uh, actually uh, Zionist regime or not? The, the, the Jews always overplay their hand. Okay, the, the, the Jews, I've written a long book called The Jewish Revolutionary Spirit, which goes all the way back to the time mm -hmm. of Jesus Christ and uh, their rebellion against uh, Jesus Christ. They rejected Jesus Christ, who is the Logos. Logos is the order of the universe. When you reject the order of the universe, you become a revolutionary. Now, you don't accept limits when you're a revolutionary. Uh, you uh, believe in force. You believe that you can force the issue. You don't believe in limits like the moral law. And this has been the Achilles heel of the Jews. Okay, they, they whipped themselves up into some type of messianic frenzy, uh, which they did in 70. And that led to the, the destruction of the temple. And then they did it again in 135 with Simon Bar Kokhba. And everybody gets this messianic frenzy and then they get destroyed. Well, that's the history of the Jews, and there's no reason why they shouldn't be in the same situation right now with Israel. It's a, it's a, they're in a very delicate situation. They're in a very dangerous situation. It's not a big country. They've got hostile neighbors. And the question is, are you going to push it too far? Well, if you look at history, the answer is always yes. Yes, they always push it too far. Uh, Bolshevism was a Jewish political mm -hmm. movement in Russia. It had a terrible reaction for the Jews. Everybody knew that Bolshevism was Jewish. Everybody knew that the Cheka, the secret police, was run by Jews. And what they did was they created this animosity that finally found expression with Hitler and when he came to power, uh, who was ba used uh, the German people to attack uh, Bolshevism and said it's, it's Jewish and, and so the Jews have to be punished. So it came to that type of reaction, always does in history. Why wouldn't it happen now? Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, Zionist is a system that always has and is still does seek the destruction of the Palestinian people. And even we see some evil actions against the world community. What are the goals of these the measures? Goal, uh, what do you think? The ultimate goal is total world domination by Jews. And they have this fantasy that they are destined, to, that, that they are God's chosen people, which they were until the time of Christ, uh, and that they have this destiny to rule the world because they are God's chosen people. And now that they have uh, Israel back, they think that they're close to fulfilling that plan, which will come about when they destroy the, the mosque on the Temple Mount and then rebuild uh, the temple. And then everyone in the, in the world will become a basically slave to the Jews. Now, they have, an accom they have accomplished uh, significant gains in this regard through their strategy of, first of all, usury, enslaving people through usury, uh, enslaving people through the promotion of vice, through pornography, all of these type of things. Uh, and they, uh, at this point, uh, I think, see, feel, I think certain segments here, feel that they are closer than ever to their goal because they have the most powerful country and uh, man, Donald Trump in the United States on their side. He's completely on their side. There's nothing that they can ask for that he won't give them if it's within his power. So this will blind them to any, may blind them to any type of potential reaction, uh, which may come about by their own uh, imprudent uh, actions. They're, they're, look, look, let's get to the heart of the matter here. The Christian, Christian mm -hmm. iconography portrays Jews as blind. If you go to a cathedral, the cathedral in Strasbourg, the facade of the cathedral, there's a picture of synagogue. And synagogue, the iconographic representation of synagogue, is a woman wearing a blindfold. So they're blind. They don't understand, they, they don't understand what they're getting into many times. And that's been the problem throughout uh, Jewish history. Exactly. 
uh, you know, ending such human rights violations must mean uh, ending the Zionist regime and replacing it with guarantees of full, equal civil and political rights for everyone in historic Palestine. How could we reach this point? What do you mean by we here? Who we we have no power over uh, either the Likudniks or Donald Trump. I, I mean I mean the word you know because the, uh, the word is calling for uh, uh, free Palestine you know uh, we means the word you know the human rights every That's, human rights when you're in into something words. when you when you're into something this old and this big and this evil uh, the talk about human rights uh, looks almost significant. Because you're talking about the drama of human history. You're talking about a, a, a battle that has continued for 2,000 years now. It's the forces of Logos against the forces of anti-Logos. I see. If, if you read the, the, uh, the Bible, the, there is the end of human history is this cataclysmic battle, uh, which could take place in the Middle East. I mean, it, it seems that that's where it's, plan it's supposed to take place. So we're way beyond just an issue of human rights here. We're talking about a cosmic drama here, a cosmic drama that can, could very well be the culmination of all of human history up to this moment. And at that point, you have to talk about God and you have to talk about ultimate, like who's in charge of the universe, who is in charge of human history. This, and, 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 and at this point, you is it God? Does God have a plan for human history? Uh, that's I think this this is the vocabulary we have to use here rather than just the, the vocabulary of human rights, because we're, we're, we're way beyond human rights. These are people who hold human rights in contempt. We're way beyond that. And if we can't uh, the world can't seem to change them uh, through uh, institutions like the United Nations, then who can change them? Well, I guess God is the uh, God is in charge. I think we have to look at this with some type of theological perspective. Otherwise, we're just going to fall into despair and from despair into terrorism or hopelessness. But we should be the mean of God to do something in I'm order to solve this matter. A kind of quietism or it? fatalism. Uh, when I invoke God's name, I do not mean to imply that we have no role in bringing out God's will on this earth. I'm just saying that in, in a, a situation like this, yeah. It, 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 we have to keep that in mind because the, the next move is not obvious. The only next move I can see, if you ask me from a human perspective, is Hezbollah firing rockets at Israel if they occupy if they uh, occupy the West Bank. That's the only scenario I can see at the moment. Okay, I see. I see. Uh, somebody believes that uh, Palestinians must abandon any form of resistance to Israel and uh, appeal to a mythical Israeli center left that is yearning for peace and a two-state solution. They also blame Palestinians for their own uh, persecution well, by Israel. What do you think but about it? It seems that the, the Israelis can't get over their addiction to Benjamin Netanyahu and the most extreme form of Zionist racism. They keep re-electing these presidents. Avigdor Lieb, uh, Lieberman was in uh, part of the, the cabinet. Uh, he's an extreme uh, racist Zionist. So it would be great if we, if there were Israelis who could step up and and stop these human rights abuses, and and who did believe that there was a moral law and that people, the Israeli soldiers had to follow that moral law. But uh, it, so far, it, it's, I don't see it happening. When is it going to happen? I mean, I know that Benjamin Netanyahu almost did not get reelected, but almost doesn't count here. He is back where he was. He uses fear. The, the Jewish people are, are very vulnerable to fear. They live in fear. They live in constant fear. And they have organizations, their leadership knows this, and there are organizations that do nothing but spread fear among the Jewish people. The Anti-Defamation League is a good example of this. You know, they're always claiming that the next Hitler is about to arrive, and if you don't send them money, uh, they'll all die. So that's part of what you have to factor into this equation. Mm -hmm. uh, how could you see the role of uh, actually both day demonstration? Well, it's good. I mean, it, it will be a sign that the yeah. the Palestinians are not going to give up. It will be a sign that the world will uh, continues to support them in their efforts and they're not forgotten. Uh, and these are all important things.
So I think it's important that they have that that uh, memorial every year. Okay, and uh, do you think that by the by the out, outbreak of coronavirus, is there any negative uh, influence or effect on the this demonstration, or is is there any alternative uh, approach that uh, the international communities are using Every government instead of in the most world demonstration has used the coronavirus to stamp out dissent. This is the excuse throughout the world. The, the oligarchs are using the coronavirus to destroy constitutional rights and freedoms that have been long established in places like the United States. So I'm sure they will do the same thing uh, with Quds Day. There's, uh, there's no question that the Israelis will try to use it as some type of excuse to suppress uh, demonstrations and suppress dissent. That's exactly that's what happened in France. You have a, a pro-Israeli regime in France under Macron, uh, and uh, the oligarchs uh, have used the pandemic as a way of suppressing the yellow vest demonstrations. And I think that's the parad going to be the paradigm for the rest of the world. I think the same thing is happening in China with Hong Kong. It's going to happen. It's I, I think we can count on that happening. Okay, thank you very much. What do you think about the decline of Israel? Israel. Uh, we are talking about something that uh, if, it, if, if it doesn't bend, it breaks. I think that's the paradigm here. You know, uh, it's better to bend than to break. But the Israelis always seem to get in a situation where they, they, their resistance leads to breaking rather than bending. Okay. Uh, if you want to add something more, I'm all ears. Things change. Things can change as quickly as they changed in, in toward the bad. They can change toward the good. We don't know. We don't have the future. But we, I think if you have a sense of what the big plan is, you will remain hopeful and realize that these oppressive regimes don't last forever. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks for uh, joining us again. And uh, thank you for your kind cooperation. And uh, have a good time. Thank you very much. Koda Hafez. Goodbye. Dear audience, it was another talk with Dr. Michael Jones, editor of Culture Wars magazine, about Israel's inhuman actions and the role of Quds Day demonstration in removing such human rights violations. Thanks for watching and goodbye.